I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Tensions continue to mount in Israel. Even today, uh, Tel Aviv come under attack, as well as early this morning in the wee hours of the morning, Haifa. We got word from a friend of ours, Sister Amy, over in Haifa that said that the sirens were going off at 3 a.m. and she had to run for cover in the, in the secure room in her apartment building. It is just uh, really <clears throat> getting very desperate for the, for the Jewish people in Israel having to live under constant uh, the barrage of rockets coming in out of Gaza, the long-range missiles uh, that they have been supplied with uh, by, by uh, Iran, as well as uh, them being able to make their own rockets in a, a munitions factory in Gaza. Israel has continued to try to uh, slow down the, the barrage of rockets coming into Israel. Even Jerusalem now has come under uh, fire where they have tried to launch rockets towards Jerusalem uh, that have fell a little bit short, uh, as well as the uh, nuclear power plant in Demona. Uh, so it's kind of ironic. It kind of makes you wonder if maybe perhaps the Dome of the Rock might not be destroyed in this campaign. In fact, I'm sure it's exactly what the intentions of the Vatican are. They would like to see the Dome of the Rock destroyed, although they side with the Palestinians. They too would like to see it destroyed because they have a, a plan in mind, and their plan is to build a third temple, but not for the Jewish people. In other news, Rabbi Cook has actually revealed publicly in Israel to Israel's national news that the Catholic Church is actually now has a new status quo in Jerusalem. They are allowed to do not only communion in King David's tomb, but they've also been authorized to be able to have prayer services there as well. The reality of this, the cold hard reality, is that Shimon Perez in 1993 sold off or gave 60% of Jerusalem over to the Vatican. And of course, the, the, the Agenda of the Vatican was revealed by a former Jesuit named Alberto Rivera, who also taught us from the inside, from Cardinal B, that the Vatican was actually the, the instrumental in creating the Muslim religion founded by Muhammad, the so-called prophet, a man who could not read nor write, but was tutored by, by uh, monks in Northern Africa. They had him marry Kaji, who was a very loyal Catholic girl, and in the tutoring that he got from the monks in northern Africa, they spread throughout all the regions of the Arabic world long in advance before finding this, this charismatic young man that there would be a prophet rising in the Middle East. So when Muhammad came on the scene, the Islamic people were ready to receive him. Not many years after that, the first caliphate was declared. And of course, it was the Pope of Rome then, in the seventh century, who had full control of the caliphate. And he became the war machine for the Vatican to kill off the believing Jews that believed in Yeshua to be the Messiah, and the Jews that actually, that not only the believing, the believing Jews, in fact, who actually kept the laws of God, kept the Sabbath, and honored the, the Word of God as it was actually written like earlier Jewish believers did, such as Simon Peter and Yeshua's brethren as well. But strangely enough, the Vatican once again has gotten a hold of the property and exercising their power in Israel, showing that they have that power. Recently at the tomb of David, there were prayers that were being made by Catholic Church members from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And what did they do? but they threw the Jewish believers out of King David's tomb and would not permit them in there. This was revealed by Rabbi Cook to Israel's National News. The sad thing is, though, in this episode that is going on with throwing out the Jews out of the holy sites that are in Israel, as Rabbi Cook pointed out, he said this is what happened back in 1967 when they had taken control of the Temple Mount, only to end up giving it right back to the Palestinian Authority. And now they've taken over Mount Zion, and they've taken the tomb of David. Religious Jews have no rights, it seems, anymore in Israel. We've also heard that the Kotel, where the Wailing Wall is, another very sacred site for Jews, will soon be given into, given into the hands of the Palestinians. No wonder why there's a war going on over in Israel right now. No wonder why Gaza is lobbing rockets 
all over Jerusalem. You can't help but wonder who's really behind all of this. Well, certainly we know the Vatican is the one that is behind the Sunni movement, but yet they've covered their tracks, somewhat that is. They had their caliphate, the new caliphate actually sit there and declare that they're going to attack Rome. Well, that's only to make the Vatican look a whole lot better. After all, they have to do something to make it look like that there is an Antichrist somewhere else. They've been having Walid Shabbat and other people like him preach all over the world that there is a Muslim or a Mahdi, the Muslim Antichrist, coming. In fact, it's kind of interesting. It's the Catholic Church and many people in the charismatic movements and evangelicals that are sounding the same trumpet. Why? The Vatican doesn't want attention drawn to themselves to be the Antichrist, not the way the original Protestants actually did preach it years ago. Instead, people are falling for this hook, line, and sinker, as we say, to accept this caliphate as a possible antichrist. Well, the Pope was pretty smart in having this put together, no doubt, because he, it's even been said that, this, that uh, the caliphate for the, uh, the uh, ISIS group there rides, on a, rides in on a white horse in every town that he conquers. Well, yeah, I guess it just has, it takes a lot of gullible people to believe it. Looking into other issues here, as we see, though, the, the hand, uh, as, the, as the Vatican gains an upper hand in Israel, and as the, the Israeli government is agreeable in enforcing the laws that the Vatican wishes to be enforced, such as taking over T King David's tomb, the a holy site for the Jewish people, and pushing out the religious Jews, we see once again, though, very reminiscent of what happened in the Holocaust, we're seeing the Jewish people use Jewish people to enforce the laws of the Vatican. It was Pope Pius XII that worked with Adolf Hitler. And of course, when Jews were forced into the ghettos, what did they do? They then rounded up faithful Jews that would work with the government for privileges. And then those there would end up policing the Jews and turning on their own people. It's sad and it's a shame that this is once again happening. They actually used special force units at the tomb of King David back uh, just a couple of weeks ago when the Catholic Church decided to hold a mass, not in the upper room, but in the very room of King David's tomb marker where it's located at. Rabbi Cook was in protest trying to gain, gain entry uh, even the day before when they were holding the mass on a regular basis in the upper room uh, just above King David's tomb. But the Israeli forces refused to allow any Jews whatsoever in the access. And when the mass was held in King David's tomb, they threw the Jewish people out. Special forces and police units came in and forced all the Jews out of there, just like it was in Nazi Germany, just like it was across Europe and in Poland and in different places where the Jews were put into ghettos. They took and they used Jewish people to be the police to run the system. You see, what we, don't, what we seem to have forgotten is that what happened in Israel back in 1948 when Israel's war of independence was fought, there were things that were going on in the background that most people have no idea about. And one of the most important things was, was I personally know the family of the Bielski family, whom the movie Defiance was made after, Tuvia Bielski. He was recruited to fight in this battle because of his heroism in the war in Belarus, fighting the Germans and saving 1,200 Jews. But the, oddly enough, though, when he was asked to join one family in the fighting for the independence, he was told, let no one go beyond this point, Jew or Gentile or Muslim or whatever. You kill anyone that tries to go past this point because this family was trying to gain control up in Jerusalem as the battle of war of independence raged on. Of course, Tuvia Bielski, who was a true Jew at heart, who loved the God of Israel and the people of Israel, refused. He said, I just spent the last six years living in a wilderness, protecting the lives of Jews, taking out the lives of the Germans that were trying to annihilate our people. And you mean to tell me now I'm supposed to kill? I'm supposed to take the lives of Jews? He said, I'll have no part of this. God bless him. He was a true man of God. But unfortunately, what was it? It was Rome trying to get certain families into power, like the Jesuit Shimon Perez. His family did make it into power. And of course, that's exactly where 
this ungodly movement to bring the Vatican in and give them control into Israel actually was birthed was through families like Shimon Perez. No wonder why, like Barry Chamish reports in his book about the assass assassination of Yitzhak Rabin, Shimon Perez's hands, fingerprints were all over the workings behind the scene of this. The same with Ariel Sharon. It's sad. We're watching the events that took place in Nazi Germany are happening all over again right in Israel. And this attack from the Palestinians and from Hamas and Gaza on Israel is only a distraction. ISIS also will join into the fight before long. And no doubt Hamas up in Lebanon will join into the fight as well. And then if they can ever get it to work out just right, they'll bring Iraq down as well into this fight. What's the purpose? It is to kill off the Jewish people there. But let me just share with you some scriptures so you will know this. I know this is part of a news broadcast, but I think it's important that you're aware of this. For one, for my Jewish brothers and sisters, let me read to you from the Christian Bible here. There's a prophecy about this, and it's in Revelation 11. It says, And there was given me a, 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 a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and they, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. The Gentiles. What Gentiles is that? It's as if 2,000 years ago is once again being set up. Rome actually occupied the land of Israel, and Rome once again is beginning to occupy the land of Israel. There are several people that have actually written about how that also, that because of the, the, the move with the... Uh, with the Vatican, and through the different, different groups that the Vatican controls, such as the Knights of Malta and, and, and several other wings that they have there, that they have slowly been sh but surely are working to take over Israel. They've done it in the government. Many Jesuits are in our government. Shimon Perez was trained in the Jesuit University in Poland before coming to Israel, before him immigrated to Israel. And so the Vatican's purpose is to be able to get control of the Temple Mount, which they already have the actual legal rights to the Temple Mount. To do what? To build what they call a third temple. But in reality, it'll be for the Pope. The Pope of Rome will actually sit in this temple and exalt himself as the Antichrist. For how long? For 40 and 2 months. They will tread down the holy city for 40 and 2 months. Now you see, the thing is, even though Rome has had... The, the, the legal rights to the Temple Mount since 1993, they still have not taken possession where their feet are treading the city. Remember, God told Abraham, footsteps being possession, wherever the soles of thy foot treads. Anyway, also one other one I want to share with you in Ezekiel 35. This is for the Palestinians that have been so gullible that you have fallen for the Vatican's lies. You know, it's interesting because over in the book of Daniel, in chapter, uh, I believe it's chapter 11, it says the princes shall come. He comes up strong with a small people. That's the Palestinians. And you've fallen gullible to believe that the Vatican is really on your side. Well, let me share with you exactly what the prophet Ezekiel had to say about the Vatican, which are also called Edom. Orthodox Jews do know that Edom is Rome. It says right here in Ezekiel chapter 35, Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, cut off from him that passeth out, and him that returneth. And I will fill in his mountains with the valleys, and all thy rivers shall they, they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee a perpetual desolation. Um, let me, let me, let's see here, I may need to back up just a little bit. Um, In Ezekiel 35, let me read this to you real quick. Verse 3. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee. I will make uh, thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste. Thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast said... Excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry, because thou hast 
had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of their iniquity, when their iniquity had a final end. What is he talking about? This is where Pope Pius XII was taking and was, was murdering the Jews, six million. That's just, that's just what's publicly said from private estimates, much larger than six million Jews were murdered. And it was at the hand of Pope Pius XII as he took and engineered Hitler to be the killing machine of the Jews. And don't think that because the Americans came in and the British came in and fought, uh, and, and fought against Hitler that this was some great, big, wonderful thing that was being done. You have to understand the Vatican has got a purpose and their purpose is driven to wipe out Jews and Protestants as well. So in the war, what did they do? They knew how to select different groups to go in. And so they put the Protestants at the forefront like in the Battle of D-Day so that the Protestants would be killed in the battle because the Vatican looks for world dominance is exactly what they do. And of course, the Pope wants to reign from Jerusalem because he believes that Peter was the first Pope. Well, Sadly enough, there was actually proof found. And they know that there is proof that is there underneath the Temple Mount that shows clearly the Vatican that Peter never was in Rome. That's something that the Vatican does not want getting out to the public. Let me continue on. Thus will I make Mount Sierra, going down a little bit for well, actually, let's go back to verse 6. Uh, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, I will prepare thee into blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Uh, sith thou has uh, not, uh, sith thou has not uh, hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out, and him that returneth. That's all the dignitaries of the world that go in and out to the Vatican. They come in and they go out. As I've told you, remember, there's two keys on the Pope's flag, a gold key and a silver key. And the gold key represents that he has spiritual powers over the world. The, the silver key represents the temporal powers or the political powers. He believes himself to be a king. <clears throat> anyway, as we move on here, and he says, I will fill his mountains with his slain men. Thy hills and the valleys and in, uh, in thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee a perpetual desolation and thy cities shall not return and you shall know that I am the Lord, because thou hast said these two nations. Now watch what he says. This is the critical verse I wanted you to hear. Because what does he say? He has said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. We will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. The only place that Hashem ever was, was on the Temple Mount where God himself dwelt in the Holy of Holies, where Hashem's own spirit, the Shekinah glory, came down and dwelt inside the temple on the Temple Mount. That's why the Bible declares, whereas the Lord was there. You could take that in a compounded meaning as well. Because it was Yeshua that tread this whole entire land of Israel. You see, God was there. Isn't it interesting where Yeshua went? I've always kind of thought, thought that was interesting in itself as well. The God of heaven, Hashem himself, came down to Egypt and delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. Yeshua went to Egypt as well. And another thing that was kind of interesting, when Yeshua goes out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, is it possible that he actually went to where Mount Sinai is in northwest Saudi Arabia? We never have known for sure where he went. But I kind of wonder that because when Elijah, Elijah goes down there, it was a 40-day time period that he was uh, gone as well. Just a thought to think about. But anyway, as well, God of heaven came to Israel and dwelt among his people. And of course, Yeshua, too, walked all over that land. Anyway, just a little thought to throw in there. Sorry, I know we're in the news, so let me just kind of quickly finish this up. And thou shalt, shalt know that, I, uh, verse uh, 11, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. And of course, we know when God will judge them, 
And that's when they kill the two witnesses that God sends according to Revelation 11 as well. Because the Bible clearly says that when, they're, when the two witnesses are killed and dead and their bodies lay in the street spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. And why Egypt? Because the Pope of Rome is the modern day Pharaoh that Moses promises to come and to defeat. According to what? Exodus chapter 15, when he says, Asherah la Adonai ga ga oh. uh, He says, I will sing unto the Lord that I have gotten victory over the horse and his rider. One horse, one rider. Not the 600 that Pharaoh had with him. And Moses put it in the future. It's a future event that's going to take place. All right, let me continue on here. So he says here, uh, I'll make myself known to them when I have judged thee. Thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Thus with your mouth you have boasted against me and have multiplied your words. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Again, that's what I was talking about. According to Revelation 11, when it talks about the two witnesses after they've completed their ministry for 40 and two months, then their dead body, they're killed, and right there outside of the Damascus Gate, right there where you see the rioting going on in East Jerusalem, that's where they're killed, that's where they're brought down, and when their bodies lay there for three and a half days, they're not suffered to be put in the graves. The Bible says that they will, the whole world will rejoice because of the plagues that they have brought upon the whole face of the earth and tormented man on the face of the earth. Why? You want to know why? Let me tell you why that they're going to torment the entire earth. It's because the Israeli government is not protecting their citizens the way they should. Why does the Israeli government, when they go to bombing buildings over in the Gaza Strip, they call up 10 minutes in advance and let the people know, we're going to bomb your building, you better get out. You know, they got even enough time to get their weapons and get out. This is really, uh, it's, it's ironic to me. Where is the protection from the Israeli government for their citizens? It should be a ruthless campaign. You know, back, back years ago, when Israel was first a nation, there was enough believing Jews that were part of that system then. They protected Israel from this bunch of thugs that are trying to rule the nation now. And let me tell you something. I, had, I heard a man recently speak about how that even the Mossad is controlled by the Jesuits. Now I know that's true. And I'll tell you why, because I happen to know two agents that work for them. And when I exposed the Vatican and what the Vatican's real plot was, something that they had said all along, oh, we know that, we know that, we know that, we know that, the, that the Catholic Church is bad, we know that. But when I exposed it publicly, I got slammed like you would never believe. It, it caused like an evil spirit to come out in the threats that I faced as a result. I will expose it. And by the way, because you will not stand up for the Jewish people. Now, I'm not saying that the, 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 the average soldier, they love Israel. They will stand up for Israel. And there are some in the government that love Israel too. I believe somebody like Naphtali Bennett, he also loves Israel. He wants to stand up for the Jewish people. But what happens is when they get high enough in the government, then the, the, the elites that are controlling everything over there in Israel that are saying this is the way it's going to be and that's the way it's going to be, then they come under threats. Their families come under threats and they begin to bow to the pressure. Have no fear, Israel. God is sending your two witnesses to you. The two olive branches that stand on beside each side of the golden candlestick according to Zechariah's prophecy. And I guarantee you one thing. Let all the nations come down. It may bring a hardship upon our people, but when his witnesses get there, they're going to fight the battle. God himself will anoint them and they will fight that battle and they will bring it down on the entire world for the evils that they have done to Israel. And I guarantee you one thing, if you're not under the blood then, you'll sure wish you were because the death angel will begin to pass then. And I guarantee you one thing, and even like it was in the case with Moses when Moses was here and he told him, put the blood over the lentils and over the doorpost. And he said, get underneath that blood. And if they weren't under the blood, I don't care if they were a Jew or not, if that firstborn wasn't under that blood, they died. That was a type of the day we're living in now. When God sends again Moses to deal with the children of Israel, you will have to be under the blood. You will have to recognize Yeshua is Mashiach. And if you're not under the blood, you will die. I'm Stephen Ben Danun, Israeli News Live. 
God bless you. We love you. And shalom, peace be unto Israel. Shalom. Shalom, Al Yisrael. Love.